Who's a good boy? Yeah. In a previous video, I discussed marble mazes, and I said that I would talk about in a future video, this video, how I would make a marble maze. So let's talk about that today. So here we go. I got Blender all set up and ready to go with just my little floor object. I've also got some other objects. We'll look at those in just a minute. And uh, so here's the way that I would do it. I would start by creating a Bezier curve and I would go into edit mode and I would start editing that. I'm going to start by making this much, much bigger. Yeah, right now it's curved, but I'm defining the uh, curve based on this and I can bring this up to Z. I might turn on my lock uh, so that I can move it in nice, neat ways. So all, all I'm really doing at this point is I'm defining a curve. Uh, that's odd. I got it rotating around the rotated around the medium point and I can extrude this curve out and keep it going. Um, let's move these up a little bit, rotate it down just a little bit. Okay. So that's the basic idea is I'm just defining a curve and this curve is defining the shape of my marble maze. And I like this way of doing it because it enables the most freedom. You're not locked to working in 90 degrees, but you could be. You could really easily lock yourself to that. Once you got the curve, the shape that you want and making it interesting, you'll need a bevel object. So create another curve, have it just be a half circle, but make it as wide as your marbles are, maybe just a little bit wider as well. I've set these up for eight millimeter marbles. So there's my half curve for it and then go to my bevel object, set it to that curve, and ta-da, there's my bevel object. But you might notice that the curve is kind of tilting in weird directions. Now you could go into the edit of the curve, grab each one of those these nodes, and adjust the tilt manually to tilt it differently. Yeah, see? And we could set it up like a roller coaster or a slalom ride to do that. But really, we just kind of want them all to be pointing up, so all you have to do for that is in the twisting, set it to Z up, and they will keep the Z up. We've got the curve, and we can we can curve this around and do all sorts of cool things with it. Yeah, you can you can you can mess with it. This is yours to mess with and do with as you please, whatever. But unfortunately, it's too thin. It's single wall thickness. So of course, all we have to do is come over here, add a modifier, add a solidify modifier, tell it to give it a thickness of two millimeters, so it's perfectly thick. And there we go, there's our marble run and we could go in all sorts of crazy directions with this. However, this is not a 3D printable marble run. We still need to worry about the overhangs, bringing it up to the overhangs, giving it something to support on. And whether you do that, the Gwal gadget way of having some forced overhangs that are very clever and placed in very clever places forced bridging that are, it's kind of designed to fail, but succeed before you get to the important part. And that way you can have very high overhangs or whether you do it the way that, uh, who was this on Thingiverse did this? Uh, Twilo Lannan, good job putting your brand right on there, buddy. Um, this one has much higher angles and it goes swoopy around a lot more. The, the Gwal Gadgets is a nice, slow path to the bottom. Every one of these marbles just gets to take this nice, slow path. Whereas this one, the marbles exit and they go woof right to the bottom and their trip is done almost before it finished. But they, he's got four tracks in here that kind of go together. This one, it almost looks like he already did that, the, the technique that I showed you guys with doing a curve and stuff like that. But then notice his overhangs, they're these kind of arches so they start low and then come up and touch them. And I'm, I'm sure that he had to model each one of these basically individually and he had to think about the different shapes of it. But he managed to make it work and it is super cool. I love this maze. It's, it's another one of the great marble mazes. Gwal Gadgets impresses me on a different level. They're both very cool. I don't think I could choose one or the, over the other. I think this one's cool. But that is how I would make a marble maze if I were going to do it.
Now, full disclaimer, I haven't made a marble maze. Not from scratch. Of course, I've taken other marble mazes that already exist and modified them in ways that I want. And that's, that's a perfectly acceptable way to design whatever it takes to get to the end. But if you wanted to do one from scratch for any reason, this is the method that I would use. Now, I should mention that this is not the method that Gual Gadgets used. What they did was they built little tiles and made them all fit together. That way he could control this slope and make sure that it was the same every time. And that's also a fine way to do it. And I love that Blender gives enough freedom that we can do it this way or that way or any way that we want. It's just super cool. But anyways, that is how I would do a marble maze as I promised. There's that discussion. So thank you guys very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon backers. Hey, low poly dinos. If you're not on the, the mailing list, you should get on it. But check out the Kickstarter. And I want to thank you very much for watching. Safety first. I'll see you next time.